All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on your time, or good evening. Uh, today, our topic is about uh, uh, something I mentioned in my book, In the Deception of Allah, about Muhammad ordering the murder of an innocent uh, believer. Uh, now, the Muslims, they get so angry, and they accuse me of um, fabricating uh, lies, and etc. Today we are going to show you why I am making the Muslims upset. You see, if you watch the cartoon or like let's say this old uh, funny uh, TV series, it says you cannot handle the truth. You know, <laughs> this is exactly what happened to the Muslims. I can show, and you know, let, let me what let me do this first. I'm going to open my Skype, and I challenge any Muslim to call me and to challenge me. To prove the story to be true you see the funny is that muslims they accuse me of lying but nobody have the courage to get me busted i mean you post uh, you make a video you say christian prince is uh, where is we can, where we can find this hadith well just why you don't call me why muslims don't call right now and let us see either people will laugh at you or people will laugh at me so this is an open challenge for the Muslims. I'm opening my Skype right now, just to be sure that any Muslim would like to call, he can call immediately. And all what you need to do, you do not need to add me, just as you see my account in Skype is there, Debate TV. Find it, click at call. You know, I have a setup to allow people who they are not in my uh, contact, because I cannot add any more people, they have too many. Uh, you can call me immediately. In front of us, this is a Shia website. The reason I'm showing you the Shia right now, because a Muslim, he said, this is what the Shia believe, not what we believe. I mean, this guy is an idiot again. By the way, one of you, he said to me, if you stop saying uh, idiot, stupid, you know, more people, they will listen. I don't care who listen, who don't. I mean, you see, for me, I share the truth as it is. And if somebody is an idiot, I have to say he's an idiot. I don't really care about if there is a, a million subscriber to my uh, account or just a 20 or 30,000. This is not really, this is the last of my worry. My worry is to share the truth as it is. If somebody is stupid, I will call him stupid. So what the Muslims, they do, anything you mention to them is written in their books. The first thing they say to you, it's da'if. It doesn't matter what you are saying, da'if, but da'if is accepted. Even the da'if one, the da'if mean weak for those who don't speak Arabic. The word da'if mean weak, but da'if is accepted. So why you are why they are saying to you da'if? There's no sound, guys. Am I heard? I think the sound is good. Refresh your page, please. Uh, why they mention to you da'if? Because they try to run away from what you present. Whatever you present, okay. What if it is not da'if? Da'if is accepted. I can show you a video right now. Like if I, the problem is, uh, when I play Muslim videos, they right away flag me for copyright. You know, try to take uh, my videos down. Uh, but you can go right now and search for Sheikh Hamza, Da'if Hadith, and you will see Sheikh Hamza, who is a Muslim, who do a TV show, and the Muslim they appreciate him big deal. He explained to the dumb Muslims that Da'if does not mean it funk. It pass. I'm quoting exactly what he said. It did not funk. It pass. <laughs> so it passed, my friend. So right away, they assume that when they say to you it's weak, they run away from what you present to them. The Eve Hadith is accepted. All right? Uh, Posting video cat are not stepping on the Quran. I don't know what does that mean exactly. Maybe the Quran is smell bad because cat are very sensitive. Very sensitive. If you want to have a, uh, if you have a, a like a food is poisoned or something wrong with it, uh, give it to a cat. If the cat refuses to eat it, don't eat it. You know. Uh, maybe the cat uh, is uh, <laughs> funny. Anyway, so here. This is a sheikh. This is the, for the guy who said to me, "We Shia, we don't believe in this." 
This is your sheikh. This is the Imam Astarhi Al Husseini. Big potato. And this is his website. This is his official website. You see in the top, this is his official website. Let me zoom in. All right. Do you see it, my friend? So this is not my website. This is not Christian Prince speaking. Your Imam is quoting the same hadith which Muslims trying to deny. And the funny they say to me, to me well, we went in Sahih al-Bukhari in English, we did not find it, you eat it. Who said that this is, you, you see, there, there's something about, about the dumb Muslims. There is, there is books, is the explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari, is quoting the story. And Sahih al-Bukhari, number one, Sahih al-Bukhari in Arabic, the numbers have nothing to do with the English one. Number two, if somebody quote for you and says it's reported in Sahih al-Bukhari, and that is the explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari, this is your problem because it is your Imam who says this is in Sahih al-Bukhari and this is the interpretation for it. And I will show you that. So, this is the Shia Imam. He is using the Hadith which is approved by both of them Shia and Sunni not Shia only not Sunni only actually it is coming from Sunni books but the Shia they like this hadith too and now they are using this hadith to torture the beloved ones of the Sunnah the story here in the front of us I'm not going to read it all but just to make it simple for those who do not know what happened here a man he was well known to be a great believer and the Muslims they mention his name all right and they said to Muhammad there is a great believer who pray a lot he is very passionate to, to Allah he is a very great believer he is a wonderful man he fast he nobody pray like him like this guy he pray like day and night so obviously Muhammad he got jealous and they describing for him describe the band to Muhammad he said I don't know him huh? and look what it says here uh, An Anas reported from An An Anas. Who is Anas? Muslims, who is Anas? Are you going to say to me he's a scumbag? You can say that, no problem. Can a fiah the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rajulun ya jumuna to ta'abuduhu wa shtihaduhu? In the time of the Prophet, there was a man we admired his uh, 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 like uh, uh, worship and uh, uh, passionate and uh, righteousness. And we mention him to the prophet or to the messenger uh, with his name so he could not recognize him and then we describe him for him he could not recognize him and why we are talking about him is the man coming over so now they are talking about the man the man is coming so we said to him oh this is the man Muhammad said you are telling me about a man about a man I see in his face the look or the touch of the similarity of shaitan, Satan. Why? They were just praising him. He's a great believer. He pray a lot. He fast. He is a very righteous man. And Muhammad, right away, he says, oh, this guy, he, in his face, he have a, a, something of the shaitan. You see the jealousy of the... He did not do anything wrong. <laughs> nothing, nothing. This guy, he is a Muslim. He pray to Allah. He fast. He, he pray more than them, even the Muslims, they admire him and the story in front of you. And then right away, Muhammad, when he came to him, he said, do you think, like, are, you, are you thinking yourself like there's nobody is better than you here? You know? This is what Muhammad said to him. I mean, and there's no reason for that. But this is the sign of jealousy. Do you think like there's somebody, nobody is better than you? Imagine I am in a church and a guy, he enter upon the church and I am there and I claim that I am like like the, the best guy there and then they start telling me about a guy who is a wonderful Christian who pray a lot who 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 uh, who is a very decent very righteous and amazing person and then right away when he come to me he says do you think nobody is better than you huh obviously it's a jealousy correct it's it's clear and it's obvious and then uh, Muhammad uh, after he said to him do you think like there's nobody is better than you uh, the, he, the, the guy he said by Allah yes this is a, remember, remember this is the story as reported by the Abdul 
we do not know exactly the actual truth this is the this is their side of the story not our story the guy he said by Allah he swear by Allah uh, yes and then he enter right away to pray look this guy is good he is going to the mosque to pray right away he don't waste time he don't talk too much this guy he pray all day the prophet said who is going to slaughter this man what 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 guys do you remember the Muslim they say to you that the Quran said that Allah said to Moses if somebody he killed an innocent man as if he killed all mankind how many times we heard this okay now what is the crime of this man any Muslim want to tell me what is the crime of this man what he did why Muhammad want to kill him and then Abu Bakr he said I will kill him look at the volunteer man a second ago they were praising him a second ago they were saying he's an amazing person Now Muhammad he said who want to kill him Abu Bakr he said I will kill him so he entered upon the mosque so he entered upon the mosque and he found him praying so he said praise be to Allah should I kill a man he is praying mm, maybe it's not a good idea the Prophet he forbid us from killing the, the one who pray Wow what a nice prophet <laughs> but isn't the prophet to order you to to go after him in the most to kill him well obviously he's in the most praying then he came out and he told the, the, the messenger uh, uh, the messenger he said to him what you did did you kill him the man he said Abu Bakr I hated to kill him while he is praying and you are the one who forbid us from killing somebody is praying so I'm just obeying you the, the the messenger of Allah said who he who will kill this man he's getting more angry now because Abu Bakr he could not make it Omar he said I will kill him so the Omar he entered upon the mosque he found the man his head down in the floor praying so Omar he said the same as Abu Bakr he said Abu Bakr afdalamini said well you know I think like Abu Bakr is better than me to do to do so I'm gonna I'm not going to kill the guy who is his head is down you know I'm going to wait for him until he finished at least so he came out so the Prophet he said to him Mah, which means what up what's up you killed him call uh, I, I, I found his making his his bone his face down to Allah so I hated to kill him so the Prophet he said who would who would kill the man for me? Man yaktul al-rajul. The Muhammad is getting crazy now. Fakala Ali. So Ali he said, "Ana, me, me, man. Come on, they they are potatoes. I'm going to kill him for you." So the messenger he said, "Anta in adraktahu. You will kill him if you find him. Hmm? Like, like rush before he you catch him before he leave. So." Uh, Ali he enter uh, and he found him he left what a sad story and then Muhammad he said if this man was killed there is no two men of my nation will be in this agreement oof, 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 oof. now look here this is from the Shia website for the one who said to me this is what the Sunni believe and this is the Shia etc this is a Shia you believe and you will see why they believe in that first of all this is this is a reported in the book of the explanation of al-Bukhari now the question here if the hadith is not in al-Bukhari why it's in the explanation of the bukhari you find you find out Abdul <laughs> you know what I mean if this story is not coming from al-Bukhari why it is in the book it's called the explanation of al-Bukhari hello okay no problem Islamic madness so this is the book of uh, al-Isab al ibn Hajar value number one 484 uh, uh, ibn Kathir, uh, 2 to 7 remember this is not my numbers this is not my reference this is your Muslim website reference uh, Two nine eight seven uh, uh, from Abi Sa'id al-Khudari, 
Musnad Ahmad, volume 3, uh, 15. And, and, uh, and, and as it came in Sahih Muslim and Sunan Ibn Dawood, read with me. Hmm? According to them, Ali, he killed him. All right. Now they are uh, giving more reference. More, this is not the story, the same story, but it's like different reports. But it's the same. All right. Raja at Tariq Abu Fida Al Makarizi, etc. So all those references, and this is the Shia approved. So the one who said to me, "We Shia, we don't believe in garbage like this." Here we go. This is your Shia website, and you believe in it. So shut up. Now we go to the Sunni. Again, if there is any Abdul, he have the courage to call me. Please feel free. I would love to have you live on air. All right. Now, guys, don't forget. To copy the link and share it with your friends because most of people do not know what we are that we are live on air now here in front of us this is a video this is a video speaking about the same hadith I'm talking about and the link is down in the info so you can click in it and you can hear this Imam who is a Sunni from Saudi Arabia praising the Prophet for ordering a killing a man who was praying the same exact story I'm reading for you The same what? The same exact story. How Muhammad, he saw this man and he said, they told him that he is a great believer, so he thought he's a big shot. So the prophet, he told them, he have the look of shaitan in his face. Who is going to kill him for me? The link is underneath of the video. Please click in it, especially if you speak Arabic, and laugh when the Muslim deny what I say. If this story is a lie, why your scholars even today in TV stations, they are proud about it and they are quoting it. And this is the station of Iqra. You know what Iqra? You can find it even in this network in America, the, the filthy American. They are broadcasting the terrorism TV station and they are wondering why there is terror in America. You see the microphone? It says Iqra. This is an Islamic TV station and this is Sheikh for the Sunni from Saudi Arabia. Now, we can find you endless reference for the same story. Read with me what they say about this, this story. What, 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 what? Should I sing it for you? Muslims. Should I sing it for you? Does it say there's a sahih? Or I'm making things up. Who is a Muslim? He speak Arabic when I call me right now or read with me. Anyone? The same exact story. Here we go. In Abu Bakr al-Sadiq jaa ila al-Nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa qala ya Rasulullah inni bi wadi kada wa kada ra'aytu rajulan mutakhashshan hasan al-hayya yusalli fa qala lahu al-Nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idhhab faqtuluh fa qala idhhab li wa bukra fa lam ra'ahu qala adha adha kana an yaqtuluh fa raja'a alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa tamla wa faqtuluh fa dhahaba Umar fa ra'ahu ala al-hal alladhi ra'ahu Abu Bakr fa qala fa raja'a wa lam sa'ita wa nasta'a wa mutakhashshan fa raja'a This is in the fast reading Should I read it in the slow reading Muslims Which one you prefer Huh? You Muslims are a bunch of cowards, so you accuse me of lying, but none of you dare to call me and get me busted? What a shame. I am live. Call me right now and record the video and post it all over and let everybody laugh either at you or at your profit. And as you see, it says Sahih, which make it more spicy. What's wrong with the Abdul? How many references I should show you? You see all those stories in the front of us. What book I'm reading from now? Let us see. Abdul. 
Do you see what book I'm reading from? Let me let me zoom in. This is Fathul Bari, fi Sharh Sahih al Bukhari. So this hadith is in the explanation of al Bukhari. Question. Why in the explanation of Al-Bukhari there is a hadith like this if Al-Bukhari never mentioned it? You ask yourself. So I mentioned to you what is explained from Al-Bukhari and the reference in the front of your eyes. And here we go. Let us zoom out so everybody can read with me the story again. So this is Fathul Bari fi Sharhi Sahih al Bukhari. Do you know how the book look like? Should I show you? Let us see. Where is the book of Sahih al Bukhari? So hold on, let me see the image. I have the image somewhere here. Um, I hope I did not close it. Uh, here we go. Do you see it, Muslims? What is the title says? Fathul Bari. This is the English translation for the book. So this story can be read in uh, the book of Sharh al-Bukhari, the explanation of al-Bukhari. All right. By al-Imam al-Hafiz. We go back. Now, hear the same story by Fathul Bari. And here it's appear in volume number 12. You see the numbers, the print in the print and the bent in the like the year of a printing, etc. The size, like now, you know, I changed the, uh, lately I changed the font of my book. So the size of the book changed, as simple as that, you know. Uh, if I make my the font of my book uh, 14 the book will become 600 pages So here the numbers will change here. You will see that the story uh, Let us see Yeah, here we go Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba uh, here we go. قال جاء أبو بكر إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال يا رسول الله إني مررت بوادي كذا وكذا فإذا رجل حسن والهيئة متخشع أن يصلي فيه فقال إذهب فقتله. Even here is even more ugly from the previous one we read. The guy Abu Bakr he just said to him I was coming in the valley of etc and I saw a man. Who is a praying and he is a righteous man praying to Allah a lot Muhammad right away he said to him go to him and kill him go to him and kill him the monster the blood lover Muhammad he cannot accept that somebody is appraising someone else except him this is why he changed his name from Qatham to Muhammad and again, in this print, let me pause the link here. Hmm? Actually, you know what? I'm going to pause the link in the in the info of this video. Uh, let me let me do it right now as we speak. So anyone wanna go and read and educate himself? You see, we don't speak things from our mind, and this is why. And you know what? Uh, uh, the Muslims who say that Christian Prince is lying. So are you saying the story is exist or the story is fabricated? I want to know Who is a Muslim want to call me and tell me what what do you mean by lying? The website I'm reading from is that a Christian website Let me zoom in and the address so you can see which website I'm reading from do you see it? Islam port dot Com. Islamport.com. Do you see it, Abdul? Is that my website? If we go to the main website, the main page, 
Where will we go? Al Mawsu'a al Shamila, ismailislamport.com. It's a library of the Muslims. All right. But because they are desperate, they do not know how, how they can run away from the disasters written in their books. Here, there's a different Muslim website. This is a Sunni website. They are discussing how this happened. And here they are saying, وَقُلْتُ وَهَذَا إِسْنَادٌ صَحِيحٌ عَلَى شَرْطِ مُسْلِمٌ The hadith in all sides and direction is sahih. <laughs> and here you will see, you will see, like, look how many reference, look how many reference about where the hadith can be located, but the Muslim cannot find it. You see the reference? You see the book's numbers? They cannot find it. All those hadith is the same. But they cannot find it. Huh? Let us see this one here. Actually, there, there is a fatwa website. Hold on, let me let me find you the fatwa. There is a fatwa about this because somebody he asked for a fatwa. Eww, serious. You see this guy? Now it's things became official. We need a fatwa now. Fatwa for those who do not know is an official answer by a scholar. Which means, according to Islam, is that true or not? Let me get you the fatwa. Hold on, let me find it. Oh boy. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Let me add this one too to the info. Hold on. What is the number of the fatwa, Abdul? What is the number of the fatwa? For those who have a bad vision, in case you are Abdul drinking too much urine. Oops, I went out, sorry. Here we go. This is fatwa number four, five, zero, nine, five, and you are the winner. Any Muslim he dare to say that this fatwa is a lie? What website I'm reading from? Fatwa al Islam. Web. This is official Islamic website for Muslims to seek official answers from official scholars. Do you see it, Muslims? Seriously, do you see it? Or still you're gonna see it? And here it says. The story as we quoted for you. Let us go down. Warawa Abu Ali Wagayrahu an Anas and reported by Abu Ali and etc. and many uh, from Anas he said there was in the time of the messenger uh, uh, a man who we like or admire a, a, a lot for his worshipping and uh, hard working for the sake of Allah and we mention his name to the Prophet the Prophet uh, you know uh, after we mention his name and we describe him for him he could not like recognize him hmm? and while we are talking about him is the man is coming we say to the Prophet this is him this is him the Prophet said إنكم لا تخبروني عن رجل إن في وجهه سفعة شيطان سفعة شيطان. So you are telling me about a man in his face have the touch or the look of shaitan. Like what? The guy he did not do anything and the Muslims they admire him a lot. He is a good believer. He is a fantastic man. He prayed to Allah a lot and right away Muhammad he called him a shaitan. Immediately. And then the story, when he came, after he entered the mosque, Muhammad, he said to his men, who of you want to go in and kill him? So the man entered the mosque to pray. 
فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so the messenger be Allah pray on him and salute him said who will kill the man Abu Bakr said me so he entered upon him and he found him praying and he said praise be to Allah Am I going to kill a man his brain and the Prophet he forbid me from doing that? You see, they are they are talking about forbidding killing Muslim men praying, not Christian men. All right. This is a Muslim guy. Not only a Muslim guy, he is a very, very, very passionate, a righteous man who pray to Allah a lot. But Muhammad he knew already this guy is entering the mosque to pray. But yet he is ordering, he is saying, Who wanna kill him for me? He cannot take it no more. You see here, Muhammad did not say arrest him for me. And by the way, uh, uh, I can, I can, uh, I can copy this and take it to Google Translation. Hold on. Let me do that. Let me open Google Translation so the Muslims will not say uh, I'm making things up. You know them. You know, you know that dude, right? It, it, like uh, we know that uh, Google Translation will not give an accurate translation, but it's okay. We will see what Google Translation can do. something better than nothing <clears throat> okay translation okay here we go we are in google translation all right we were where we were here I'm going to copy in the front of your eyes. Here we go. All right. And I'm going to move to the top so we can switch to Google Translation. What is Google Translation page here? All right. In front of your eyes. Paste. Translation. Here we go. The translation here might, might not be correct, as you know, but it's okay. That man is admired his worship. What? what he's what? The Muslims are telling me Muhammad about a man. They admire his worship. So this is the man we mentioned, and ishtihad. Here, ishtihad is mean he's uh, like hard working, you know, like he is doing a lot of work for the sake of Allah. We mentioned to th this to the Messenger of Allah. And his in his name, and then he said, the, the man he came and the, he said to him, You tell me about a man who, in his face, the, the look of shaitan. <laughs> oh, what the heck? <laughs> Suddenly, Muhammad is God, he knows who is shaitan, who is not the guy, he did nothing. Now here the the translation is kind of funny like he kissed and doesn't say that all right so then he said who want to kill him for me let us go here the messenger of allah said who killed the man who kills the man who is the volunteer when i kill the man for me guys is the text clear is the text clear or i need to 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 uh let me see if I can make it bigger and zoom in. Here we go. All right. I think this is better. All right. So he said, "Who who killed the man for me?" Like what? What the man did? Nothing. Why you want to kill him? Just because you don't like his look and you say he is, uh, he have a look of shaitan. But as you see, the Muslims they admired him. He was a wonderful man who worshipped a lot. He did nothing wrong, and Muhammad because of his filthy jealousy he found that this man obviously getting him busted because he is the prophet but yet he don't do what this man do so he fear 
that this guy he might replace him for he is better he is a better uh, uh, worshiper he pray a lot and he is the prophet he is busy having sex with vagina Muhammad is doing National Geographic vagina trip while this man is praying to Allah all day long so Muhammad he felt insecure and he now right away that this is a competition I have to kill it immediately before it's going to grow and he find more followers to admire him and right away you see how fast the decision is to kill a man he did nothing except he's a great believer so the message of Allah Allah pray on him said who kills the man who wanna kill the man for me Abu Bakr he said I I will do it nice job Abu Bakr I mean look how nice the gang of Muhammad I enter and I found him praying what look this guy is a real believer I mean he don't have to go and pray you see as you see Muhammad and the guy outside eating zucchini huh? and talking about the guy but the guy is praying which one is better the one who pray a lot and he don't waste his time or, or the gang who is in the corner of the mosque in the outside talking about how we can kill this guy so we found him we enter we found him praying he said huh? subhanallah like translation here hallelujah <laughs> I kill uh, I kill a man and he pray and the messenger he forbid me from killing a man who pray I'm not going to do that, to that. So then the messenger of Allah uh, said, what did you do? The Abu Bakr, he came out and obviously he did not kill him. He said, I hated to kill him while he's praying. And you have finished, uh, you know, you, you, have, you have forbid us, not finished. You have forbid us from killing somebody in praying. But Muhammad already knew the man is going inside the mosque praying. Uh, so Muhammad he said again for the second time who kills the man Omar said I see here the translation is not coming correct so he entered and he found the man praying again and he said well you know what look like Abu Bakr is better than me because he, he made the right decision so which means he isn't going to kill him right now because he found him praying I found his face to God he and he, when he left out he said Muhammad he said to him did you what meh what you did you know like what you did exactly what's up he said I found his face to Allah this guy he is bowing down and he is not lifting his head even to get to cut his head up what they can do I mean I'm uh, I'm waiting for him to lift his head up he's praying 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 I thought to kill him uh, you know uh, uh, Muhammad said like I, I wanted you to kill him so then he Muhammad he said who killed the man? Muhammad is really getting not. Then Ali, he said, I. Muhammad, he said to him, well, if you can't catch him, kill him. And then he get in. Uh, he said, uh, he get in, he could not find him. And he left. So Muhammad, he said, if you kill this man, no two men will be in this agreement in my nation the translation here is not coming correct so do you see Muslims you are you are in denial for a very simple reason because this is disgusting this is disgusting this is a prophet of God who kill a man he is a Muslim man who is a great worshiper a great follower and he said nothing wrong and he commit no crime and he killed no one and he stole nothing Yet, just because the Muslims they admire him very much, Muhammad decided to kill him. Any Muslim want to call me life and explain to me what kind of a prophet you have? And most time you see I did just use a Google translation copy paste in the front of your eyes I mean I, I I added nothing I took nothing I you know it's just Google translation
Do we have any Muslim would like to call? This is the truth about Islam, my friend. Muhammad is a madman who kill anyone he find him as a competition. As simple as that. And as you see, I'm showing you even a fatwa. I mean, officially a fatwa. Do you know what fatwa mean? Abdul, do you know what fatwa mean? Huh? You see, all those, all of those are references. This is a Muslim Ahmad. What about Muslim Ahmad? Is he a shish kebab? Musnad Ahmad, Hadith number one nine nine one eight. Any Abdul have a objection? Any Muslim? And you know, guys, if a Muslim came and he started texting, you know, don't go all over him and insult him. Let him uh, talk. If a Muslim he's in the chat, let him encourage him to call me, and there is no need to speak like kids. If you are a Muslim and you have something to say, please feel free and call me. And, you know, we are talking. I mean, you are more than welcome to talk. If there is any Muslim who would like to call, Any Muslim? No Muslims. So where is the brave one who is uh, disagree, and they say, uh, "I'm not going to," uh, you know, like a Christian prince, he lied to us. Uh, Christian Prince, he is, etc. You know, I mean, come on. Uh, you know, sometimes you look at the text, you find like a bunch of kids talking. Stop talking like kids. Anik, behave yourself. What's wrong with you? Somebody at, enter the chat, you start attacking him. Leave the guy alone. Do we have any Muslim would like to call me? You see, we are here to help the Muslims, not to insult them. When I say stupid, I mean stupid because they are. When I say a liar, I say a liar not to insult, but because they are. When I say, you know, uh, someone he is a scumbag, I'm not insulting. I'm saying he is a scumbag, for he is a scumbag. So don't say something unless it is what he is. And there's a reason for it. If a person he came here and he is just saying, where do you get this from? I show it to him. And then if he say it's a lie, he have to prove it. And then after we show him, if he's still in denial, that's when he is the liar, not us. Then we can call him liar. Do we have any Muslim would like to call me life? Huh? This is the same hadith, and this is a Shia website. You see, it exists in the Sunni and the Shia, and all of them, they believe in it. You know? You see, all those references, as you see, Shia and Sunni, they believe in this garbage.
Any Muslim? You see, sometimes I feel like as a I'm a homeless guy and he is begging for a Muslim. But yet when I go and hang up and I go to sleep, then the Muslim they challenge me, make him post. When I go up, open my eyes, I go live, not a single one of them wanna call me. All right. Do we have any Abdul? We have this guy, Trince, uh, which, like this guy, he have like some drama. Let me block you. If you cannot handle a chat room, don't come here. You know, people are weird. I mean, people they are stupid. You know, it's a chat. You have no idea who's talking to you. So you cannot. People they call me names. People they threaten me to kill me. People they say, if you cannot handle a chat, you idiot, leave, go sleep. Why you are in YouTube? Why you are posting? It's a chat. Go and take your medication, like Muhammad. Drink some some camel urine. You know, there's there's some people they love drama, and this is what the Muslims exactly they are. So one of them he told them, I could not find the hadith the Christian prince. He 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 quoted in his book. Obviously, he's lying. He's a liar. Okay, here we go. Christian prince is challenging you, and I'm wanting to show you endless. Reference for this hadith. You know, there's an easy way, by the way, to find reference for anything, even if you don't speak Arabic. Let me show you how. Highlight, highlight, all right? Anything. Like, I will highlight this. All right? And I will click and search in Google. That's it. Here we go. Tons of reference for the same hadith. You see it? Abdul, do you see it? Here we go. This is the book of Ali Sabali ibn Hajjur. And this is the same hadith we are talking about. Do you see it? Exactly. Different book, different reference, different reporter. Do you see it? I mean, how come I can find endless number of them, but Muslim could not even find one? All right? Look up Prof. Prophet. Perry documentary. What prophet? Who is this guy? Prophet Perry. There's a prophet these days. There's somebody claimed to be a prophet. Don't we have enough prophets? It's a good business, huh? Any Abdul? Highlight anything in the hadith and you click search in Google, you will find additional more. Here we go. Something we did not mention yet. Do you see it? Jamu al Masanid was Sunan, volume number 17. Tariq Medina Dimashq, the history of uh, etc., you know, of uh, the Damascus, volume number 74. Sunan al Duraqi, al Duraqatni. Value number two, uh, etc. It's endless, or you will find my videos. <laughs> and yet, the Muslims cannot find it. I mean, do you see how hard the issue is? Do you see how hard to find the reference? But the Abdul, they cannot find it. And all the reference is coming from Islamic official websites. You see, this is a book I never mentioned. Huh? This is your Muslim website, library Islam dot web. Do you see it? 
Do you see it? Huh? The address is clear, isn't it? This is the address. What is the name of the book? Do you see it? And this is the cover of the book. Do you see it? Oh, I forgot. Uh, Muslims are blind since they drink too much camera urine, so they cannot see anything. So do we have any Muslim here want to say something? Any Muslim have an objection? Your prophet is a murderer and he ordered to murder not only Christians and Jews and non-Muslims, he even ordered to murder a believer who commit nothing against him. He never say Muhammad is not a prophet. He never said a negative word about Muhammad. He accepted Islam. He said the Shahada. He prayed more than the others. And he never broke any of what is called the Islamic law. Yet Muhammad, he ordered him to be slaughtered. Just because of his jealousy from this man who is better than him. And a Muslim have an objection. And the funny, we show them that the Muslims, they say that this is a Sahih Hadith. And yet they are saying Christian Prince is lying. He's lying. All right. Highlight again, highlight. Highlight, Abdul. This, uh, the, this one here have uh, links. You cannot, you cannot highlight. Yeah, this one have links. I don't know, like they have a script in behind. I take you to other book. Yeah, the same reference to another book. See, there is a link for the text. The same story. وعن أنس ابن مالك قال حديث نمبر one zero four zero two. Which book? This is the book of مجمع الزوائد ومنبع الفوائد. Any Muslim have an objection? So Muslims, when I am on air, you agree. When I go, you disagree. Is that how it is? Are we going to play hide and seek? Is that exactly what you Muslims are trying to accomplish? When a Christian prince, he stay for hours saying, any Muslim, none of you dare to call. When a Christian prince says goodbye, guys, good night, I will see you tomorrow or the week after, right away you start posting and saying to me, uh, You are lying. I never said something without giving proofs and reference. Never. And I can provide reference for this story endless. Actually, I'm going to add my in my book this this for the same story list of reference for the same as we showed you. Any Abdul? Anyone? No, I think the Muslim they don't want me to be longer on air. Trust me. I wish them they wish I close my uh, broadcast very fast. That would be stupid of them to uh, to try uh, to keep me uh, on. You know. So, any Muslim have anything to say? Yeah, and before we finish here about this topic, uh, yesterday somebody. Uh, posted about the miracle of the Pharaoh you see you know when I see Muslims posting a miracle in the Quran I mean your Quran your Quran I'm not insulting by the way is officially a stupid book sorry Muslims I have to say it and I accuse you Muslims that you are suffering from a great ignorance 
if I go right now to speak about the miracle what it's called the miracle of the Pharaoh who is the Muslim is willing to call me right now so we can discuss it together and is going to be the best of our comedy for today who want to do that who is the Muslim want to call me right now to discuss the miracle of the Pharaoh what's happened who is the Muslim or you know what if you don't want the Pharaoh no problem who is a Muslim wanna call me right now and tell me about anything is amazing in the Quran or a discover anything of your choice anyone the Quran we cannot consider it a book of history for very simple reason the Quran do not know even the correct names of people as an example the Quran speak about the Pharaoh but there's no but there's no person his name is Pharaoh and the reason I say he considered the Quran the Quran consider uh, uh, the Pharaoh as a person because they speak about his wife and the name of the wife and the name of the etc so what there is a guy which which Pharaoh is what wife Pharaoh is a title not a name same time if we go right now to the Quran let me do that hold on as long as we are talking about this Pharaoh story just a question to the Muslims okay we are here let us go to the Quran uh, look like my computer is slowing down a little bit no problem All right. Look at the story about the Pharaoh in the Quran. It doesn't take you more than a few seconds, not a few minutes, to notice that the one who wrote the Quran is officially an idiot. All right. Chapter 28, verse number 6. I will go right away directly there. I will go to English. Just, just don't worry. You know, I will open it first. All right. Now, uh, the chapter is called Al-Qisas or Al-Qisas. This is a, a story it's about stories. All right. Chapter twin, you know, like uh, 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 speaking about uh, you know stories happen to Musa, etc. If we go and read in this stories, you will see Allah in verse number three. Supposedly, He is telling the people about the story of Musa's and the Pharaoh. Musa's and the Pharaoh. All right. And then right away, the Quran start doing poo, poo in verse number six. Why? Let me show you in English. If you read the Muslims' articles, they say to you that uh, you know uh, they found a discovery. His name, uh, a guy. His name is uh, uh, Haman. Uh, he was the engineer of uh, the Pharaoh. This is what they say. All right, hold on. All right. The name in the uh, Egyptian language is not Haman. It's, it was like, a, uh, like you know, was, it, you see, there is some are some letters you know uh, they pronounce differently. However, it is Haman or Haman. You know, in the in the in the uh, in the language of the Egyptian. However, the Quran here is saying that this guy Haman, he is a host. He is a leader of an army. Read with me carefully. To establish a firmer place to them. In the land 
and to show the Pharaoh and Haman and their host what host their soldiers change the translator here they say host all right unless they meant by host a soldier then it's it's fine you see actually I believe most of the translation translators they are just uh, you know uh, copying it from each other there is no real translation uh, but if you use the other website like this guy here you will see all the translation all lined up in one page and this is Ibn Kathir hold on All right, this is the translation or all the translation listed in this website. All right, okay. Uh, most of them, they are using the word host. Here, look at this guy. And they are armies. So Haman is not really an engineer, the one is talking about in the Quran, is an army leader. And he and the Pharaoh are equal because it says and the Pharaoh and Haman Armies you see here they put between two bracket his minister, but it doesn't say it's a minister Because if the Pharaoh is the king of ha uh, Haman Then we should not say the Pharaoh and Haman armies Because in Arabic it says you Or you you know here it says Junudu Huma, those who took my Arabic class, or you can search right now, you add ma at the end to make it double. So it doesn't say Wajunuda Hum, which means both of them. No, it says Wajunuda Huma. So there are two armies. So Haman have an army and the Pharaoh have an army. Okay, we continue. So those have two armies, and then the Quran say something very weird let me show you uh, the story is long let me uh, let me flip the page uh, i mean to turn it off so you, you don't get hurt uh, looking with me <laughs> oh boy Uh, to make it simple, the Pharaoh he ordered Haman to build for him uh, uh, or sorry, he told Haman to build for him uh, a tower. All right. This is a chapter 28, verse number 38. Let us read together. Turn it on now. Here the translation it says, O oh, chief. It doesn't say oh, chief. It doesn't say that. It doesn't even mention his name. Alright. Waqala Faraun Ya Ahl al Mala. Etc. etc. Then so he said to Haman, can you make for me Haman something like this? Okay, now Haman he built for the Pharaoh a tower. Where was that tower located? Who is a Muslim want to tell me where was that tower located? A tower made from bricks out of a clay. Any Muslim can tell us? Is the buildings on Egypt? made of a clay okay is it made all of it from bricks all right is it a building to go up to sky anyone notice what i'm talking about which one which story in history about a king 
he wanted to build a, a, a tower so he can go to God. Anyone remember? The baby loan. And if you go and search in history, you will see her man is an Assyrian minister in, in the Babylon. <laughs> so how Haman became with the Pharaoh? You, you know what I'm talking about? How Haman, the one who built the tower for his king, became a person who lived with the Pharaoh according to the Muslims. Any Abdul can explain to us? We can go right now and read the interpretation for this story. Chapter 28, verse number 38. Let us go. So the Muslim, they will not say we are making things up, you know. <clears throat> uh, I need to close some pages too many pages open hold on that's slow in my uh, my computer let us see here all right and we close this one Yeah, because I have tons of things is open so we need to uh, okay 28 38 I go back guys do you see it do you see it what is the purpose of this building? Read with me carefully. This is Tafsir al Jalalain. Tafsir al Jalalain means the interpretation of a Jalalain. So, supposedly, the Pharaoh he said to the member of council, like his minister, I do not know of any God for you other than me. So, a kindle for me, O Haman, fire over a clay and a brick for me. You know, which means made it from and bake for me bricks of a clay, and make it uh, uh, for me a lofty tower, place, that I may take a look at the God of Moses. <laughs> this is the Pharaoh. Any Abdul? Or this is the, the Babylonian tower. Any Abdul? Who is the one who want to see God? Who want to see if there's a God <clears throat> in the sky? Who is that one who built who built a tower from bricks? Where in the history of the Egyptian that they all those those all all what we see in Egypt they are those are tomb is that correct guys is that correct or I'm mistaken all the great buildings we see in Egypt they are tomb is that correct <clears throat> anyone have an objection those are tube the pyramids they are tubes. They are sorry, tombs. They are they are made for for a grave. It's a grave. It's not to go up to God, and to see God. And this is not how they made. Here we are talking about a lofty tower, made of a brick and and clay. Go right now and check the Babylonian tower. So the stupid Muhammad he mixed up the story between the Babylonian tower. And the Pharaoh and the story of Moses and then you are telling me that the Quran is speaking about history
Any Muslim want to say something? None of the buildings of the Egyptian is made so they can look at God. Those are tomb for their pharaohs and their kings. All of it. Any Abdul? Is that a history or this is a dump statement? Anyone? <clears throat> After I go, the Muslim they will start posting and they will start saying, You are wrong. When we are here, eh, they are so quiet. You know what I mean? The Pharaoh is the one who did that. Okay. Who is a Muslim and explain to us what's happening? Where we can find the tower which is built for the Pharaoh in Egypt to see God. Who is a Muslim want to give us a help? <laughs> Haman is the minister of the Pharaoh? I mean, this is really stupid. You know, actually, just to show you something additional stupid in the Quran, which is going to get Muhammad more busted. <clears throat> oh, man, oh, man. Garbage in, garbage out. Inna Qarun kana min qawmi Musa. What? <laughs> any uh, any Muslim here have an, an idea what's happening here? Karun, he was from the people of Musas. Okay, let it go, let it go. I mean, it, it, it's history. This is history. This is documented history. Okay. What else? What else? Moses, he came with his message to three. Qarun, and the Pharaoh, and Haman. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Anyone notice here what is the mistake in this story? Anyone notice here? What is the mistake here in this story? Let us see who is uh, of you is going to think deep about it. I like I like to share my thought, but I like people to think with me. Not only you know I am the only one thinking. What, what do you think there? There's, do you think there's a problem? I see a big problem there in those three names. But who can see it with me? Anyone? No, no, there's more than this. You see, if if uh, if uh, uh, Karun was a person, uh, sorry, if Haman and the Pharaoh, they used to be, Haman is a minister for the Pharaoh according to Muslim, right? Is that correct? Okay. So was Moses sent to Haman or he was sent to the Pharaoh? Look what it says in the story here. Remember also, Karun, and the Pharaoh and Haman there come to them Moses with a clear sign so Allah he sent Moses to Haman with a clear sign in order to accept that that's mean Haman was in different location from different nation 
because the Pharaoh is the one who present the Egyptian who is her man then you know what I mean who care for her man if her man is just a minister Allah he sent Moses to her man who's her man the Muslims in their article they say her man was an engineer Allah he sent Moses to Haman and now Haman name is in the Quran here we go became famous <laughs> now the other issue we just showed you the verse before that says that Karun or Karun he was from the people of Moses hold on the people of Moses believe in Moses this is why they follow him <laughs> go back go back go back the dump Abdul <clears throat> all right وَإِنَّ قَارُونَ كَانَ مِنْ قَوْمِ مُوسَى and Karun or oh, he was from the people of Musa do you see it so what, what does that mean if you go on right now and search about Karun, this is a story about a guy. He was very rich, supposedly, extremely wealthy, and he have nothing to do with Musas. How this guy became from the people of Musas? No, no, no. This is not our. This is not Aaron. This is a different name. Don't mix. This don't mix. This is not Aaron. Okay, this is not the brother of Musa. Harun is a very rich person. Are you getting my point? How this guy became from the people of Musa's? Any Muslim wanna explain to us? How this guy? Let us search in Google about this guy. Hmm. Where is this guy is located? Let us see. Any Muslim want to explain to us? How this guy in the Quran is appearing? What is what is this guy? Who is this guy exactly? Any Muslim? Is that Korah? Is that really Korah? The one we see his name there? Who think this is Korah? Who think that this is Korah? If you look for this name, Korah, or oh, let us see, we go here. Here they are giving you a lost uh, a list uh, list of names. Anyway, if you see here in the Bible, it's giving you a list of names, but where the name of Korah is located? Anyone anyone can notice with me where is this name is located? You know, let us make it simple. According to here, the chief of Korah, the chief of Gotham, the chief of etc., the chief of etc., the chief of etc., blah, 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 it's, it's, you know, etc. You know, for me, I don't find 
any connection between what is the name that is mentioned in the Bible and the name is located in the Quran. The name is located in the Quran is about a very rich man. His name is Qarun. This is Wikipedia. They can put whatever they want. For me, I don't find any reason to believe that this is the same person. Qarun, you know, uh, it can it can come as a translation, but the Qarun, the, the one is speaking about in Islam, is about someone he is extremely, extremely, extremely like a crazy wealthy. He have a lake of golds and silver. He have mountains of golds. He have mountains of diamonds. This guy, he is the most rich man ever in history. All right. Now, according to Muhammad, that this rich man, he lived in the time of Moses, and Moses he came to him, and he spoke to him. If you notice with me, uh, the story here. Uh, let us go back. It says here that Qarun, he was from the people of Musa's, but he was unjust. And we gave him treasures. What is that will make uh, this guy? What that will make him? If he was unjust to Musa's. Remember, he says, from the people of Musa's. That means this guy, he came after Musa's. Or in the time of Moses, at least, and he was must be have must be be a king. You see, he was unjust with them. That make him a king. Who is this guy? The most rich one in the in the between the people. Who is going to be? What do you think? Who is going to be the most rich, especially in the old days? Because a king will not allow somebody else to be more rich than him. He will take his money, as simple as that. The most rich man is the king. So that will make Karun the king. And that will make him a king of Musa's. How that happened? And here it says it clearly that he was unjust to them, which means he is in control. He is in control in Musa's, and he is in control of the people of Musa's. This is what the Quran is saying. Any Abdul would like to tell us something? Because as you see, Musa's he came to Karun, he came to Pharaoh, he came to Haman with his message. Any Muslim have a comment, or this is a this is a mistake here? Anyone? You know, like you see, I'm trying to uh, to make the Muslims get excited and call us and show us that we are wrong somehow but somehow they don't you know they are afraid to call I'm not sure why if you have your God with you <clears throat> you see the names in the in the Bible have nothing to do with the names in the Quran when when you get the when you get the translation in the Quran, they you see here they say to you Kor, uh, Kor, uh, Karun. Is that similar to you to Kora? Does that sound like the same? No. It's not the same. 
but people they make an assumption and they say maybe he is talking about this guy maybe it's the same person uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, you know like but I don't find really any any really connection between the names is located in the Bible and located in the book of Muhammad And here I, I am, you know, I'm willing to listen to any Muslim. He can show us something makes sense. Any Muslim? When you read the English translation of, uh, 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 as an example, the book of Numbers, you know, you will see the name appear in English as Korah. You know, it's not really Korah. It is Korah. Korah and there's a huge difference between Korah and Qarun you can tell right away right so people that try looking to find like what maybe he's talking about this guy maybe it is the same guy but they are not even the same letters not the same spelling not the same pronunciation they are too much far from each other are you getting my point So if Muhammad talking about the same person, how come the name is not the right one? However, we have a history with Muhammad. Always he got with the wrong names, correct? Like uh, as an example, Mary, she is the daughter of Umran. Who is Umran? Umran is not Umran. Is Umram? He is the father of Moses. <laughs> you remember? It's Umram. So Muhammad always he got confused with the names. This is not nothing new. But here the name is really too far. There's not even close for you as a person who don't speak Arabic and you do not know Hebrew and you know you are reading translation you are reading what in front of you is Karun but Karun have nothing to do with Korah the one you have it in English have nothing to do with the original name which is Korah you see in uh, in uh, what happened when you tr would translate uh, to English there's letters you don't have it so you have to replace them with different color uh, uh, letters. So uh, the letter ha, you don't have it in here in English. So what do you do? You add the letter H, but it's not H. Like you know, in English, when they say Isa, 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 you put the letter I. But this is not, not this is not what they say in the Quran. The Quran says Isa. So you have a letter. You yourself, you cannot find it in your language. So you replace it with the letter I. As a replacement, but the fact it is not I, it is Isa. So when we say Isa, there's no Isa, not in the Quran, not in the English. The Quran says Isa, I. You don't have that letter. So here there is a confusion. Now, the question about the story of Musa is about meeting a person whose name is Qarun. And Qarun is one of his people. And Qarun is so filthy rich. And Qarun, he was unjust. And Qarun is a, obviously he is a leader of an army. He have an army. Who is this Qarun? And what happened? Why even the Quran is mentioning the story of a person his name is Qarun, but there is nothing about Qarun. Read the story. Where, where, what happened to Harun? What happened next? Any Muslim want to tell us what this story is about? Here we go. The Quran is mentioning Harun. What happened? Who is this guy, Harun? Why, why Allah is mentioning to me Harun? And why Allah He gave him a treasure? Allah gave him the treasure. Why? Because he's bad. And what Qarun have to do with the Pharaoh and have to do with Haman? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, if I read the whole uh, chapter in front of me, it's funny. There's nothing about the story. Who is this guy? Read the whole chapter on love.
So he mentioned the name uh, Qarun that he is was rich and he was unjust and okay and what and what is next? Read. What? Any Muslim can tell me what happened? Where is this guy he used to live? He is the son of who? Do you remember yesterday when we have a live uh, a broadcast? A Muslim he says to us the Bible is Bible written by John. John who? Okay, Karun who? Who's Karun? I want to know who is this guy Karun? Why he is so important to the point Allah Himself is speaking about him? No information. It's just a collection of fairy tale stories. Any Abdul? Any Abdul have an objection? Hmm? And by the way, here, uh, if you read the chapter 40, verse number 24, read this one. Now, when he came in truth, from us they said slay the son of those who believe in him okay he came to the truth to who of the old we send Moses with our sign and authority manifest to Pharaoh Haman and Karun how this happened Any Muslim can tell me, as I know, uh, the people of Moses, they follow Moses. They believe in Moses. If Karun is a person from the people of Moses, why he is so important if he accept or not? Just because he's rich? Unless he's a king. And because he's a king, he has the authority to forbid people from not following Moses. So what was the impact of this Karun over Moses? Nothing. Any Muslim can explain to us what's happening? Now here, there's additional uh, 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 problem in this story. All of us will remember that the Muslim, they say Muhammad is, was the only international prophet. Is that correct? They say to you, Moses was sent to the Jews. Isa was sent to the Jews. Correct? That's what they say. Muhammad was sent to the whole world. But look at this. Moses was sent all over. Karun, which is according to many legions, mostly it's a legion stories, that he is a person who lives in Turkey. And mostly he is from considered from the Aramaic Assyrian, something like that. Haman in Iraq. Pharaoh is Egyptian. But Moses was sent to the Jews, according to Muslims. You know what I mean? Was the Pharaoh sent to the Jews? He, wore, he was sent all over. So Moses, according to the Quran, was international prophet. Why the Muslims, they say to us, every prophet Allah he sent except Muhammad was to his people only. Additional to this, there is additional mistake in the story. Do you remember where the Quran says, we never send a messenger except in the language of his own people? Right? We never send a messenger unless in the language of his own people. Let us go there. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ We never send a messenger, chapter 14, verse number 4, but in the language of his own people. What does that mean? 
which means Allah never never send the messenger ever there's no exception unless he is from the people as you see and he speak the tongue of the people is Musa from the people of the Pharaoh any Muslim can explain to us what happened here Allah he confirmed and he said that in the time of Muhammad this is not before Musa this is in the time of Muhammad we never ever send any messenger ex unless he is from the nation to his nation speaking the language of his nation why in order to make things for them clear that makes sense but we just show we showed you in the other verse in the Quran it says that Moses was sent to Pharaoh Haman and Qarun but the Quran says, I never send any messenger except to his people in the language of his people. Was Musa speaking to the Pharaoh in Hebrew? <laughs> any Muslim have an answer? What the language he was speaking to or with? Any Abdul, this is additional mistake in the history of Islam. Contradiction for the Quran that Allah He will never give any messenger unless He speak the language. And actually, I find that this uh, verse here makes sense. I mean, imagine if uh, if we send the messenger to Japan, but he don't speak Japanese. That will not make sense. All right. So you need to speak the language of the people so they might understand. All right. Now, we will compare this verse to a Pakistani Muslim from Pakistan. Allah will never send, based on this verse in the front of us, will never send a messenger to Pakistan unless he is from Pakistan and speak the language of Pakistan. If I grow up with the Pharaoh, does not make me Egyptian, my friend. Moose is still. A Hebrew man is that correct right now I am an American I have American citizenship but all of you knows that my origin is not from here today I'm allowed to get citizenship because of the law but before if you live for the coming 200 years you are just a stranger is that correct Like as an example, as an example, what is the name of the caliphate of ISIS? His last name is Al Qurashi. What does that mean? He is from Quraysh. You see how they go by back in the name. So it doesn't matter how long he live in Iraq. He is not from there. He is a stranger. He is from Quraysh, from Mecca. Ibn Kathir. They say he lived in Damascus. They call him Ibn Kathir Al Qurashi. They claim that he is coming from Quraysh too, according to some, you know, reference. And many. So now the Musa's he live in in Egypt doesn't make him an Egyptian. And the Quran calling Musa's from the children of Israel. Correct. Even the Quran. Call him Moses from the children of Israel. So he belonged to where? He belonged to Israel. It doesn't matter how long he lived in Egypt. And the verse in the front of us it says, to his own people. Do you see it? So in order for Moses to be a messenger, he have to speak the tongue of his people, and he have to be a messenger to his people. So Musa does not fit and he is not a qualified base in the Quran, not in the Bible. Based in the Quran, Musa is not a qualified to be a messenger for the Egyptian. For he is not from the people and he is not a qualified because of this. Even though he might speak the language of the Pharaoh. Because the Quran says why? 
it says in order to make things clear to them what about Haman do we have any Muslim here have an object objection Uh, Kurdish, you can call without a friend accept. I have my setup change, so you can call me right away. Just click at my name and call. <clears throat> so, if I am a person who grew up or adopted, but I know my origin, I know who I am, still I am not an Egyptian. If you adopt a Chinese kid, and you are from different ethnic group right away you will notice that you cannot be from them what a different nothing Moses grew up between the Egyptian but he is not from the Egyptian and even the Quran call him as one of the nation of Israel he is not of the nation of Egypt getting my point what about Aaron Aaron was a messenger too to the Pharaoh according to the Quran but the Quran confirm that Allah will not send any messenger unless he is from the people speaking the language of the people any Abdul It doesn't matter even if you speak the language of the Egyptian You see guys read with me carefully. Let me change the translator for you. You are confused Some of you at least all right <clears throat> Read carefully with me, please And we did not send any Apostle, but with the language of his people. Who is the people of Moses? Are they the Egyptian or the Israeli? All right, we have a call. Hello? <clears throat> Hello? Hey, hang up. Anyway. Who is the people of Pharaoh? Sorry, of, of Moses, the Israeli. It says in the front of your eyes, we never send an apostle, anyone, but with the language of his people. And Moses, even in the Quran, never been considered From the Egyptian are you getting my point at least if the Quran consider Moses as an Egyptian I will say okay well at least the Quran consider Moses as an Egyptian but the Quran never consider Moses as an Egyptian Moses is a messenger for the Jews only but as you see Allah supposedly he sent Moses and Aaron as messengers to three names Haman and the Pharaoh and Qarun the Quran says Qarun is one of the people of Israel we will let it go what about Haman and the Pharaoh and according to the Muslims that the wife of the Pharaoh she believed in, in Moses so Moses have a believers already in the family of the Pharaohs who they are not from the Jews so this chapter actually is full of errors and full of mistakes the story about the Pharaoh 
Do we have any Abdul want to say something? And by the way, according to uh, according to the Quran, uh, remember where where, where Musa live, guys? Where Musa he live? According to the Quran here in the story, where where he where he live? He grew up in Egypt, correct? Okay. Qarun, Qarun, the one is mentioned in the Quran. We mentioned to you his name. Is supposedly is a very rich man. Correct? That's what the Quran is saying. The Quran says that this guy Qarun is extremely wealthy, and he have an army. Okay. How how Qarun he met Moses? Which land is that? As you see. Their names is listed together, Qarun and the Pharaoh and the Haman. And all of them, they have armies. So if Qarun is a, a person from the people of Israel, how Qarun met with Moses, the only way, way for him to meet him is to be in Egypt. Correct? Okay, how he is from the people of Israel, but he have an army. <laughs> You know what I mean? Do you think the Pharaoh will allow anyone else to have an army except him? And we showed you that the Quran says that even Haman have an army too. If we say, just to let it go, that Haman is working for the Pharaoh, which is wrong. Haman is a minister in Iraq for you know, you know, he had nothing to do with with the Pharaoh. And but just for the sake of argument to let it go if we say that Haman he worked for the Pharaoh so how Haman he have an army and the Pharaoh have an army it doesn't make sense for the army is the army of the Pharaoh only so all of them they are leaders and we are talking about Pharaoh so obviously we are talking about Kings because what is the similarity between Qarun and the Pharaoh anyone can tell me I mean, why, why, we, why we are putting the Pharaoh and Qarun next to each other? Obviously, this guy is a king. Or at least, he is equal to a king. And the Quran confirmed that he is the most rich person, even more than the Pharaoh. And that is, you know, a clear evidence that he must be a, a, more than a king, super king. Because... And then now, if you are a super rich, you are a king over all the kings around you. Trump will call you if you are a person who owns it at you know a two hundred billion dollar. He will come to visit you. He will open the door for you. You know when in, when TV station and a news station they quote for you. A statement of somebody his name is George Soros right why they are quoting him who is this guy this guy is, 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 is almost dead his money is talking so even now money make you equal to Kings and even higher so imagine in the old days when you are so rich like that what what does that mean you can you know you have to protect your money in order to protect such a money a treasure you have and your name is Qarun, then you have to have an army to protect you, a loyal army. Guys, are you getting my point? If I am rich in the time of Musa's, huh? and the Quran says that, and we gave him from the treasure unlimited, like crazy. Okay, in that time, there's no banks. You see, today, if you are rich, you can take your money to the bank, and that's it. You're not worried about storing. Even if it's storing, it's not your business. Correct? In order for Harun, here they translate him as Korah, huh? in order for this guy to have this treasure, he had to have an army. And the army must be something scary, something really big. 
but as we know that the people of Musa's who live with the Pharaoh they were slaves is that correct Are we guys? Uh, are we getting my the point? A person, the Quran describes him that he have a treasure nobody can count. And it says here he have a troops. Do you see it? So who is this guy who have a troops and he have scary treasure? He must be a king okay how he is in Egypt he is a king where in order to be such a rich person scary person who the whole world is speaking about my treasure obviously everybody who have an army he would be thinking about attacking me and taking my money. But obviously, this guy is very well protected. He have a troops. And nobody is able to steal his money from him. So based on the Quran, this person must be a king. And based on the Quran, that Allah he sent Moses to the Pharaoh in Egypt so therefore this guy was in Egypt any Abdul the story in the Bible about a guy his name is Korah is not a story about a guy who is extremely faith and rich he is just a guy who have a group of people who follow him it can't be the same person I don't see any any connection between them right it's a group of people who they are rebellions but here there is a story here we have a guy who have scary earth This is why I say, like, if you study carefully the Quran, you will find there is that when somebody they try to copy a name from the Bible and try to compare them and say, okay, must be this is must be Korah. You know, I don't find you know I, if I read the Bible carefully in the Old Testament, I don't find any connection between this person and Korah. Any Abdul wanna say something? And it might be, you know, let's say, uh, you know, Muhammad is trying to quote from the Old Testament, but as usual, he is quoting the wrong numbers, the wrong names, the wrong title, the wrong location, the wrong history, everything is wrong. It is possible, you know, as we said, Muhammad always, he quote the wrong thing. Like you see, when, when the Quran says that Mary is the sister of Aaron, you remember that, right? So the Muslims, they say, oh, in the time of Moses, or in the old days, in the time of Mary, they used to call the person by like his ancestor. This is not ancestor, you know, but that's, they call her by the, her father, <laughs> not, not someone, you know. And you know, even, even by the ancestor, they will call me the grandson of etc., not the brother of etc., I am not the brother of Adam. I am the son of Adam. Is that correct? Even the logic is stupid when the Muslim try to answer to cover the mistake Muhammad did. So Muhammad he said that Mary is the sister of Aaron. Okay. But 
this is a chapter 19 verse number 28 but Mary and Aaron they have nothing to connect with you know I mean how what how, what make Mary is connected to Aaron to be her sister now the Muslim when they say to you uh, at that time they used to call the by the ancestor they saw they said you are the brother of etc uh, etc okay let us see the Quran says that Mary she is the daughter of Umran is that correct Mary is the daughter of Umran okay hold on so the Muslims here they are in trouble who is Umran This is the story of Mary, chapter 3, verse number 35. Hmm? Chapter 60, verse 66, verse number 12. Who is Mary? She is the daughter of a guy, his name is Umran. How this happened? How Mary became the daughter of Umran? Even the name of Umran is wrong. Muhammad is quoting the name of Umram. As usual, he always quote the names wrong. It is Umram, which means the last letter is M, not N. So Umram became Umran. But all of us we knew that the father of Mary, his name is not Umran. Muhammad obviously. Proving again that he believed that Mary is the daughter of the father of Aaron because the father of Aaron is Umram. Uh, are you guys getting my point? Do you see the mistake? It's clear, right? So when they try to cover the ass of Muhammad saying, oh, he at that time they say he is she is the sister, but it doesn't mean really she is a, like literally sister. Look at this. If you go in the Bible right away now, you will see that Aaron, he have a sister, his, her name is Mar Maryam. And this is the name used in the Quran, Maryam. <laughs> Are you getting my point? So Muhammad the stupid, he took the name of Maryam. And he assumed, claiming that his God talking, that Maryam, the mother of Jesus, is Maryam the sister of Aaron, the daughter of Amram. Are we clear? <laughs> so how Muhammad can speak of history? And later we will find that a, a Jewish guy, he came to Aisha. And he said to Aisha, Hey Aisha, by the way, uh, Mary is not the sister of Aaron. <laughs> Is not this is she is not the sister of Aaron. I, I see there's a couple of hundred of years between them. So Mary so Aisha she said to him, You are a liar. She didn't say you got it wrong. She didn't say, Oh, he didn't mean she is his physical uh, blood sister. No, no, no. He's talking about the ancestor. No, she didn't say that. She accused him to be a liar. And then the guy he said, Well, anyway, the prophet he knew best. He was afraid she got angry she would go to the prophet and she tell him this guy is accusing you to be a liar and right away he said well if the prophet he says so i mean the prophet he know better <laughs> who dare to say that? the prophet obviously you can tell that this guy right away he noticed that this man is a scam but they have to say he's a prophet, otherwise they will die. Any Abdul? So they can they, they try to get away from from sis, Mary, the sister of Aaron. But they cannot get away from Mary, the daughter of Amran.
let me see if I can find you the hadith in English, the one about Mary and uh, I cannot find it here. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. <clears throat> I can't find it in Arabic easy. I mean, it's very easy to find in Arabic. But the issue is how you can find those things in English. You know, that is the story. This is a Jamia Al Ahkam Al Quran, Tafsir Al Qurtubi. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. All right, you will see how Kab Al Ahbar he came to Aisha and he told her, but this is not accurate. Read with me here. Waqala Kab Al Ahbar, Bihadrati Aisha. Kab Al Ahbar he spoke in the presence of Aisha. O oh, mother of the believers, in the Maryam, Laysat bi Ukhti Harun, Akhi Musa, Fakalat Lahu Aisha, Kadipt. He said, But Mary is not the sister of Aaron. Aisha, she said, You're a liar. And then the guy, right away, he is he, like he's going to pee in his pant, you know. He said, Oh, oh, she got angry. So he said, O oh, mother of the believers, if the messenger of Allah he said so, he is more truthful and he is telling the truth and he know better. But as I know, there's more than six hundred years between them, and then she was a mute. Is that correct, Muslims? Is that correct that Aisha she was a mute? How come Aisha should not say to him, "Well, uh, you know, you get it wrong." He don't mean that she is his sister, really. Uh, he meant that she is uh, the daughter of uh, the ancestor, you know. He didn't say that. This guy is saying with the clear words that there is a couple of hundreds of years between them. Actually, there's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, but I don't know if I can find Sahih Muslim. Let me see if I can find. Let us see this one. Hold on. <clears throat> I cannot find it. Not in the English website. As usual, nothing new. All right. So, you know, we can quote history from the Quran because the Quran is a book of shish kebab. It is hummus, falafel, whatever you want. And the Muslims desperately they try to find a solution for the stupidity of Muhammad and they try to cover always his errors by fabricating excuses. All right. Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Abdul? Any Muslim have an objection of what we said? As you see, I'm showing your reference in the front of your eyes. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. All right? You see? The website address this is not a Christian website this is not a Christian Prince document or book this is your book so what do you say so since the time of Muhammad Muhammad get busted right away 
Mary is not the daughter of Umran and there's nobody his name is Umran it is Umram and Muhammad obviously is a scam because if his God is God how come he did not tell him that the mother of Mary is not Umram how come he did not tell him that the, the, the uh, Mary is not the same Mary which is the sister of Aaron like you see if in the Bible there is no story that Aaron have a sister her name is Maryam we can say maybe he meant something else if in the Bible we don't have a name that the father of Aaron his name is Amram we can say maybe Muhammad he got that wrong in little thing you know like uh, maybe here uh, the pronunciation is different it's exactly identical Maryam is a sister of Aaron real sister Aaron is the daughter, is a son of Amran so Aaron yes truly he is the brother of Mary but not our Mary the mother of Jesus <laughs> <clears throat> well, the Muslim talk about the Quran is it created or uncreated. This is because the madness of Muslims. However, the Muslims believe anyone believe the Quran is created, he should be killed. But by doing that, the Muslims now they have two gods at least, because now we have two uncreated, like uh, 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 let us say, uh, you want to call him a person. I mean the Quran. Is exist by itself is not a created. You explain that to me. <laughs> so now we have Allah and we have the Quran, both are not created. So who is the one who created the Quran if not Allah? Well, the Quran is not a created. Okay, so is that is that mean that the Quran is a divine God by himself or by itself? Madness. You know. It's a pure madness. All right. Uh, uh, somebody's asking me, well, when you say that Muhammad, he has no miracles, and uh, they say well David has no miracles so how David is a prophet I wish a Muslim will call me and tell me who is the one who named David the prophet first and as long you agree that he is not having miracles so why the Quran say that we refrain from sending miracles because of former generations we send them miracles and they refuse to believe in it which mean David has miracles so what is the miracle of David Muslims any Muslim can tell me the Quran confirmed all the prophets before Muhammad, they have a miracle. Any Muslim, you see the same question the Muslim they give you is the same bullet you use back. I would like to learn, you know, uh, from the Christians, I mean, why, why, when a Muslim he asks you a question, you don't ask him the same question? <laughs> you know, first of all, prophet have nothing to do with making miracles. It's about prophesying. Is that correct, guys? Do you agree? If somebody made up prophecy. And the prophecy is from God. He is a prophet. So the question of the Muslims is very naive. We are not saying Muhammad is not a prophet because only he have no miracles. 
but because he says stupid things and false stuff the Bible gives two conditions at least for verification of a prophethood a person who prophesy in wrong God he is a false prophet or like wrong name like Muhammad he prophesy in the name of Allah number two if he give a prophecy and the prophecy even if it's the name the true name of the true God and his prophecy did not come true that means he's a false prophet correct so it is not in the in the in the category that if you are a prophet you have to give a miracle when we ask Muslims why Muhammad don't have miracles is not because Muhammad he is not a prophet for that reason but this is additional reason because the Quran keep talking that Allah refrained from giving miracles and why Jesus then was given a lot of miracles but Muhammad have zero Same time we need to ask the Muslims then as long as the Quran confirm that all the prophets Allah he gave them miracles all the prophets before Muhammad what is the miracle of David any Muslim can tell me <clears throat> Uh, the one who texts me in Skype, did I give you a little answer you like? You know, you need you need to learn how to flip the tables on the Abdul. The same question they are giving you is a problem for them. Are you getting my point? All those verses in the front of us is mentioned mentioning David that Allah he gave him a Zabur a book it's called a Zabur the psalm okay what is the miracles of David which is given to David according to the Quran chapter 21 verse number 79 David was given a miracle. Chapter 21, verse number 79. When David he sing, even birds and mountains they sing with him. Any Abdul with us? Huh? So when the Muslim they say, "How come David didn't have miracles?" That is a statement is of a stupidity. Uh, guys, are we listening? You see, I'm showing you the Muslim translation, not my translation. Any Muslim have an objection? So if a Muslim he says, how come David have no miracles? Well, in your Quran, he have miracles. So now the question is still valid. Why David in the Quran have miracles, but Muhammad he don't? Do you see it? When David he sing, Allah gave him a sign that the mountains, the hill, the birds, they sing with him. That is a miracle. I sing. When I sing, everybody closes his door. Last time I did sing in the theater, they kicked me out. So when the naive Abdul, he says, how come then David is, is a prophet, but yet he have no miracles? That is against your book, Abdul. And now we go back to zero. Why Muhammad he don't have miracles, but David he has. Any Muslim can tell us? Yeah, to make the mountains sing with you, obviously it's a miracle. 
according to Muslims, when David he's saying, the river stop. The birds sing with him. Even in paradise. Do you remember the, vid the video I used to play for you? I cannot play it here because they will say copyright, you know? You remember the video, it's called the, des the description of uh, paradise by the Dean Show? The guy in the video, he says, when Prophet David, he's saying, the rivers, they stop. The spring of water, they stop to listen. It's a miracle. Have you ever heard of water stop? Imagine my faucet is open and I am taking a shower. Thank God it's not happening. So imagine I am taking a shower and I start singing and the water stop. I mean, that's not nice. So yes, it's a miracle. Allah, because Allah here is saying, we gave David this. You see? He says here in, in Arabic, وَسَخَّرْنَ مَا دَاوُودَ الْجِبَالَ يُسَبِّحْنَ وَالطَّيْرَ وَكُنَّ فَاعِلِينَ it's a miracle he gave it only to David. Are you getting my point? Do you see it? Allah, he subdued the birds, the mountains to sing with David. It was a specific miracle for a specific man. His name is David. Are we good? So for us, my friend, when we say Muhammad, he have no miracle because he have no prophecy, he have no miracle. He have nothing truthful. Even history is wrong. Names are wrong. Everything in his life is wrong. So what is left? What is left? Any Muslim can tell me? <clears throat> There's nothing left about Muhammad to be right. I don't find anything right about him. You know, isn't the Quran require the prophets to make miracles? Any Muslim can tell me if this is true or not. Do the Quran require prophets to make miracles, yes or no? Any Abdul? <laughs> you see, just put the question of the Muslims to examine their religion and you will see how much they will be in trouble. A question a Muslim he give you is a quick sand, is a moving sand. He will find himself digging for his own funeral. It is Allah in the Quran who require the Prophet of God to provide miracles. If you read the Quran, you will find every name of every Prophet in the Quran without a single one. All of them, they have miracles, except Muhammad. So how the Muslims can explain that to us? Anyone? No answer. All what the Muslims they have for us, they say that the Quran is a miracle. Well, if the Quran is a miracle, then this verse in the Quran is stupid. Let me show you.
chapter 17 verse number 59 And we refrain from sending sign only because the men of former generations treated them as false. So what is the reason Allah He is giving us supposedly that He is not providing any more miracles? Because people before they treated His miracles as lie. So if the Quran is a miracle, that will be a very stupid statement. Anyone knows why? Who of you knows why? Why this statement is very stupid and dumb? Officially. Anyone can tell me? What is stupid about this story? If the Muslim they are saying to us, the Quran itself is a miracle. So why he is saying in the same miracle that there's no miracle? Isn't it this verse is a miracle? <laughs> Are you getting my point? The Muslim they say the Quran is a miracle. Okay, why he is saying I refrain? When Allah He spoke that verse, He just made a miracle according to the Muslims. But He is there saying, I refrain from sending miracles. So who is the stupid here? It's like you know, you say to me, imagine you enter the kitchen and you see your mom, she is cooking something. And you ask her mom why you are, uh, uh, you know, uh, and you find her making cake. Huh? So you say to her, why you are not making cake for us? She say, I refrain from making cake, but she is making a cake. You are talking to her. She is in the kitchen making cake already. So what, what do you mean you are not making a cake? I refrain from making cake. You are cooking a cake already. Are you getting guys getting my point? Or I have to explain more? Are we clear? Imagine you met somebody, he is a builder, and you know, you say to him, he is taking a break right now, huh? He is drinking tea. And then you say to him, why you are uh, not building? Then he jump in his stage, whatever, next to the wall, and he start building, and he says to you, I refrain from building. You are building now. What do you mean you refrain? This is how stupid this religion is. So when a Muslim, he asks you a question, number one thing you need to do, think of the question and give it back to him. You know what I'm saying? Give it back to him. The same question he will be in trouble you see a muslim when he give you a, a question he is not giving you a question he is giving you a disaster for himself like a muslim he says to me how come the bible is corrupt don't start defending the bible he is not talking about your book he's talking about the bible of allah the second you say to him oh so you are saying to me the bible of allah corrupt he will start saying no 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 i'm talking about your bible or abdul the quran says that allah is the one who sent the bible he sent the torah it's in the gospel. So you are telling me that Allah book, the Torah, and the gospel is corrupt. No, 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 no. I'm talking about it. what do you mean on my book? It's not my book. Like Allah is saying he this is his book. The second you mention that to him, he flee. He want to change the topic. Give me, give me another question. Somebody hit me. Hit me. <laughs> hit me. <laughs> Any Muslim have a question when I hit me with? Hmm? Try. I mean, try, but you will lose. Any Abdul? Who's a Muslim when I when I give me a question? All the questions the Muslims they give it to you is a stupid, it is dumb. The problem is that we, as people who speak to Muslims or try to debate them, many of us we don't have enough education. Number two, you have to give your brain a training. You see, there is 
there's a fast computer there's a slow computer there's a fast processor so you have to upgrade your processor you have information it's not enough to read it's not enough to learn you need to process the information don't be just a shelf where you put the books in the shelves and the shelves they are just shelves the information you read and you hear and you learn you have to use it so train yourself when somebody asks you a question say to yourself if I ask him the same question what will happen the same exact question he is giving me as an example what is if somebody asked me why how come David is a prophet but he don't have a miracle tell him what is the condition in Islam for a person to be a prophet I want to know if there is a conditions for a person to be a prophet in Islam any Muslim can tell me hello <clears throat> Who is a Muslim voluntarily? He is willing to tell us the, the conditions for a person to be considered a prophet in Islam. Don't tell me there's no conditions. Anyone? If I go right now and search in Islamic website, or if we go to Prophet Google, uh, peace upon him. What is the conditions for a person to be a prophet? Any Muslim? I see no Muslim saying there anything. Do you Muslims have conditions? Do you have rules? Hello? Is the condition for a prophet is to marry a six years old child? Is the condition for a prophet to be a thief? Is the condition of a prophet to be a liar? Is the condition of a prophet be corrupt is the condition for a prophet to say things happen to him but there's no witnesses because Muhammad he claimed that he had miracles as an example Muhammad he claimed that he went to the 7 11 heaven but there's no witnesses even his wife she did not witness for him you know what I mean so the very the very simple logic for somebody he claimed to be a prophet at least if he claim a miracle the point of that miracle is to convince us that he is a prophet otherwise I'm not asking him really it's not necessarily uh, because when you prophesy you are giving me a miracle something nobody knows save God and you God told you and you are telling me that's wonderful that's a miracle by itself but then a guy who says I am a prophet of God and then he <laughs> he claimed that God he opened his chest and then he installed a dish of faith and dish of wisdom shouldn't I ask him why there's no witnesses a guy he said to me I was the most weak person between mankind and then God he sent me a dish of shish kebab and I ate it and I get the power of 40 men Shouldn't I ask him how come there is no witnesses? You know what I mean? You, you are telling me about things you, you, you happen to you. It's a miracle. What is the point of this miracle if nobody can see? Let me tell you about a miracle yesterday I did. I saw uh, a rat and I told him to speak Arabic. The rat spoke Arabic. 
Hey, Christian Prince, do you have witnesses? Uh, it was only me and the rat. Do you want to speak to the rat? <laughs> okay, Christian Prince, if we speak to the rat now, he will speak Arabic? No, I think he spoke only yesterday. He, he will not do it again. I don't think so. So where is the prophet and where is the prophecy? And where is the miracles? So when we ask the Muslims about the miracles, because you Muslims claim that Muhammad have miracles, but how come there is no witnesses, at least in the Quran? Where is the witnesses for Muhammad going to 7-11 heaven and going to Jerusalem? According to Muhammad, there is 124,000 messengers were waiting for him in Jerusalem. Can you find me one witness? <clears throat> Any Abdul? Until now, not even one Muslim. He gave me the condition. I'm waiting for it. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it unless, and I'm trying to to wait for the Muslim to find me the condition. There's a condition. Allah Himself. He put a condition in Islam for a prophet to be a prophet. I'm just waiting for the Abdul. Any Abdul knows what is the condition for a prophet to be a prophet according to the Quran. Let me show you. As long as the Muslims look like we will spend the whole night, nobody will call us. In the Quran, Allah He said. <coughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. Abdul, read with me. Chapter 3, verse number 183. They also said, Allah took our promise not to believe in a messenger unless he showed us a sacrifice consumed by fire fire from heaven say there come to you messenger before me messengers before me with the clear signs and even with that you ask for why then did ye slay them if they speak the truth <laughs> guys do you see the verse the verse did not say, no, I did not say that. He did not say, no, 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 I did not ask anyone to give sacrifice. And Allah will send the fire to consume the sacrifice. Anyone knows what they are talking about here? Who of you knows what this, uh, what, what, what the, what this verse is talking about? What sacrifice they are talking about and Supposedly, Allah will send a fire, you know, to consume. Anyone remember what what they are talking about? No, they sacrifice before Abraham. You see, in that Muslims, the, the Quran. This is the problem. We, you know, we we need to connect the dots. If you go in the beginning of the Quran, not in the beginning as a start, I mean, <clears throat> you will see the Quran speaking about the story of the children of Adam. The children of Adam, Adam, this is, this is what the Muslims believe. Adam, he have two sons, Ayin and Habil in Arabic, Cain and Abel. And Eve, she used to deliver each time a baby boy and a baby girl with every delivery. So what happened, one of the delivery she gave, uh, the girl, she have a cross eyes. And now two brothers, they want to marry the girl who have no cross eyes. <laughs> I'm serious. That's what, the, that's what they believe. So in chapter 5, verse number 27, Allah he told Adam 
to tell his sons to provide a sacrifice and the one who Allah accept his sacrifice is the one who Allah approve and then both of them they give sacrifice as Allah said one of them he give vegetables and the other one he give a ram a fire came from the sky and took and consume the ram and this is how the person he know that he is the chosen one are you getting the point now <clears throat> So it is the Quran who asked Prophet to make miracles. It is the Quran says from the beginning of the time that the one who Allah He sent the fire to consume his sacrifice is the one is accepted. You see, the Muslim they say to you, they lie to you, they say, I in Islam we don't have a sacrifice. All of Islam is about sacrifice, it's a big fat lie. Even they call their Eid, their holiday. The day of sacrifice, Adha means sacrifice. And by the way, they do Adha, they do sacrifice in both in Ramadan and in the second occasion. Both of them they are the day of sacrifice. So when the Muslim they say, How come David have no miracles? Well, in your Quran he has. And how come and why Muhammad he have to have miracle? Because the Quran says so. This is why in the other verse here, chapter 3, verse number 183, it says, well, give a sacrifice and let God, your God, huh, send the fire to consume it, to approve that you are truly a prophet. So now do you understand why they ask him for this request? Is it clear, guys? So you need, you know, my, my friends, you need always, you know, when you speak to a Muslim, the first thing, consider yourself, you are sitting in a table, it, it have a screw in the middle. It have like a, it's easy to flip like to the other side, to, to make it go round. Flip the question for him and you will see how badly he will be in trouble. He will be in trouble, not you. It is in his religion, it's required, by Allah and the one who created this method it is not us it is supposedly Allah it is Allah and you see the sacrifice was from the beginning of the time not in the time of Adam sorry uh, uh, Abraham according to Islam are, are you are you getting the note according to Islam sacrifice start from the first day of a human being since Adam it was Allah who asked Adam to give to ask his children to give sacrifice if we go right now <clears throat> and we read the, the interpretation for this verse all right chapter 3 verse number 183 83 all right <laughs> as you see even the interpretation confirming that this is a requirement God he gave before and here they are mentioning that we made a such a covenant was made with the children of Israel but not in the case of Jesus of Muhammad why not in the case of Jesus of Muhammad I thought Jesus is from the children of IF of Israel too <laughs> see right away Jesus have a lot of miracles you do not need that Jesus he resurrect people from death. Jesus he made the blind see. Jesus he created from the mother bird according to the Quran. So what do you mean? What Jesus have to do with this? But in order in order to save the ass of Muhammad from being exposed, 
they say it was not required yes it was before yeah but it's not required for Muhammad what so Muhammad have exception about how many women he can have sex with he have exception about stealing he have exception about lying he have exception about flying he have exception about boogers he have exception about his penis he have exception about his ass he have exception about everything as long as it's not good as long as it does not prove him to be a false prophet or true to be a true prophet so what do you mean he have an exception Allah he put rules for some and he don't want them for some why what exception if we go here chapter 5 verse number 27 <clears throat> read it and recite to them Muhammad Khabibi Muhammad recite to them the story of the and the tale of the two sons of Adam Abel and Cain truthfully uh, etc blah 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 okay now they uh, uh, how they each offer a sacrifice to God which is in the case of Abel was a ram in the case of Cain's it was a green crops and then what Allah he did Allah he sent the fire from heaven and ate it so who is the one who put this condition Any Abdul? Any Muslim? So as you see, sacrifice of a blood is exists from the beginning of Islam and the idea or the lie the Muslim they say to us that they don't believe in sacrifice, it's a lie. Since the time of Adam, Allah He required sacrifice, and the sacrifice, the one is accepted is a sacrifice of a blood, as you see. So they lie when they say in Islam we do not need sacrifice, and they lie when they say the prophet. David don't have a miracle because the Quran says he have miracles and they lie when they say that Muhammad miracle is the Quran because if so then why the Quran says we refrain from sending miracles do we have any Muslim You see, Muslims, if you call me right now, you will win for many reasons. Number one, my light is off and dark, so I cannot type in my keyboard. Number two, I'm so hungry. And when I am so hungry, I mean, I my answers come from everywhere. So anyone want to try? I did not eat since yesterday, honest to God. So who want to win? I cannot even see my keyboard. Any Abdul? My hummus is, don't you see the hummus on the screen? It's all over the screen. What do you mean where is my hummus? This is hummus. The hummus of Allah. Every word Allah he make, he's making hummus. It's messed up. Have you ever seen a child is, is eating the dirt? He look cute, right? But still he is eating dirt. That is Allah. Muhammad now, he is a prophet of God and he's telling us a story about two brothers. They are fighting over a girl because their other sister, she have a cross eyes. I mean, how in the world you Muslims can believe in such a garbage?
two brothers they have a sister she have a cross eyes and now they don't want to have sex with her because she have a cross eyes and now Allah is going to judge who is going to take the one without or the one who have no cross eyes this is what Allah he do for a living Imagine now I am the son of Adam. Allah please Allah. Allah please. I don't want to marry the, girl, the, the, the sister. She have a cross eyes, but Allah, she scared the hell of me when I look at her. I'm not even, I don't know where she is looking. Allah, don't do that to me. And the other guy, he stopped praying. Allah, please, please let, let my brother take the one with the cross eyes. Uh, this is not fair. First, I am nicer. Why you want to give me the cross eyes, girl? I mean, I, I, this is scary Allah I cannot do that okay now Allah you have to make decision there's two guys they want only one girl there's only two girls imagine two girls one have a cross eyes and the other one she don't have a cross eyes and now Allah have to solve this problem so he told Adam okay let us do this the one who give a sacrifice I like I will approve him and now we have two guys one of them he thought Allah is vegetarian so he provide carrot zucchini cucumber you know hummus and he put it in the table for Allah the other guy was smarter he said ah now let us see I think if I make a nice barbecue but with like raw you know because Allah he like raw food so I if I kill a ram and put it for him, I think Allah will like it more. Allah he likes shawarma. So he killed the ram and then Allah he sent the fire and he did the yummy mm, yummy and he took the meat. And by this, the winner was the one who killed the ram. I mean, isn't it this is amazing story? Any Muslim can say I am lying. It's an opportunity. Who is the Muslim wanna call me right now and it challenged me to show him the story of the cross eyes? If there is any lady here, she have a cross eyes. I hope you are not offended, okay? This is the stupid religion of Islam because you know if a person have a cross eyes I mean is that is that a crime is that will make him bad is that I mean I mean what the big deal God what about Allah he's Allah what about Allah he fixed her eyes and fixed the problem <laughs> you know what I mean if this is the problem okay According to Muslims, everything happened because of the will of Allah. Are you saying to me that Allah, he made this woman have a cross eyes? We, we used to have a teacher with the cross eyes. You know, when he look at us, we start doing like bad stuff. When he look in the other direction, we, we behave. Any Abdul? Any Muslim here, what we can do now? So as you see, it is a new religion. It's required for a prophet to give a sign. Even for those who they are not even a prophet, there's a sign for Allah accepting their offer. So if a person, he make an offer, Allah will show you that if his offer is accepted or not. So those people, they said to Muhammad, Show us your offer, provide an offer, and if your God, He really approve you as a prophet, huh? He will send a fire from the sky, the same as what happened to Cain and Abel. So now, do you know why this story happened? So Muhammad, he cannot say. This is not a true.
Yeah, actually, I have to go soon because I I'm afraid that the the the, the song in my stomach is going to come to your microphone. I don't know if you can hear it. It's talking to me. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, fasting is good. You see, the Muslim they fast in Ramadan, right? But the fast in Ramadan, there's no fast. It's a lie. They eat like goats all night and they watch porn. And then in the morning they sleep and then they wake up afternoon and then they eat at four o'clock. I mean, where is, where is the fasting? It is just a switch in the day night and the night day. And actually, you can go right now and search, and you will find that the price of food in Islamic countries in the month of Ramadan go up four to five times more. And to make it more simple for you to understand, a nation who is fasting, the price of food should go down. Imagine if we say, tomorrow nobody will buy gas. For the coming month, the price of gas will go down because nobody is buying it. Prices is about high demand and less demand. So why the price of food go crazy in Ramadan? Because they eat like goats, like a cow, never stop chewing. People in Ramadan in Islamic countries, they get fat and many of them, they die actually because of too much food. And not only that, you know, the way the Muslims, they fast, as they claim if they fast it's a very easy way to get a heart attack because what happened when they supposedly refrain from eating for all day and then they start eating like crazy all night that it changed the way their body system you know function and that will make a lot of impact in your system, including your, your heart. And there's many people, they suffer from heart attack, blood pressure, a diabetes, a high sugar, etc. For the system is really messed up. Any Abdul? You know, you know, when I was a kid in school, I remember you know, once I, I was uh, in, a, in a house of a Muslim kid in my age, like, you know, we are, we are together in the same classroom. So uh, uh, we went inside the house, his house, and we drank some tea and he, we ate some cookies. You know, we are kids. Then we, when we went to leave, he said, wait, wait, wait. I said, what? He went to the kitchen and he got in his hand, uh, like uh, uh, he grabbed some salt. And then he, he, he wet, it, wet his uh, lips with his uh, tongue. And then he he touched the, his lips with the salt. So I said, "What are you doing, man? You look funny, you know. You don't which means he cannot talk, you know, because if he talk, the salt will fall down. So what he was doing, he taught me what he do. He said, "All my family they do that." So what they do? What what do you mean? He said, "In Ramadan, if we go out and we eat, people they will notice that we are muftarin. We are not fasting, and it's not nice." People, they will know we are not really, you know. So what we do, my dad and my mom, the whole family do that. And maybe the whole neighborhood. So what they do before they leave the house, they eat like donkeys. And then before they leave the house, they put salt in their lips over and over. And that will make their lips dry as if it is fasting for a long time. You believe it? This is the truth. I told him, what are you learning this? He said, my, all of my family, my mom, my dad, all of them, they do that. So they eat as much as they want. They don't fast. But when they go out in the street, their lips is dry. Put salt in your lips and will make it dry as dead. As if you did not drink anything for a long time. And this is the scenario for all Muslims. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. It's time to uh, to make some uh, halal pork, you know, and uh, eat some halal pork maybe. We will see. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. I hope what we learned today is good for you. 
don't forget to uh, subscribe if you like what we do and uh, supposedly today I will make my video short you believe it I lost my day I was supposedly going to make at least like five pages additional in my book because I have to finish before the end of the new year unbelievable I'm not yeah um, you guys I hate you I hate you I hate you free time assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum free time Muhammad is an idiot is an idiot free time <laughs> Anyway, may the Lord bless you all, and I hope the Muslims are not offended. And if you are offended, who care? We are here to say the truth, and the truth will set you free. Not hypocrisy. We don't believe in hypocrisy. You do. We don't practice it. You do. And the one who live with hypocrisy, and the one who choose to be politically correct, he will never accomplish anything in his life starting with his own self because he can't be truthful even with his own he have to say what people like to hear he have to be hypocrite hypocrisy is not only sin against you know in, in according to Christianity it's a stupid I mean why you want to say something you don't like and you don't believe in why you want to say Islam is peace when you know that it is not true Why you want to say that uh, there's Islamophobia when it's Muslims are really committing terrorism? How many people they get killed last year in Europe alone? In America In the Middle East This is not phobia. We are talking about the death of thousands and thousands of real people who were slaughtered Stop being hypocrite being politically correct will take you nowhere be truthful with yourself and if the truth hurt it's better that one liar who spread lies and he himself he is losing respect for his, his own i say what people like to hear like one of you said to me why you keep saying to the muslims liars we because they are liars what do you want to say he said, because if you don't say that, maybe more Muslims will listen to you. I don't care if they listen or not. This is not my business. My business is to be truthful. If you notice, if somebody says something wrong, it doesn't matter if he is a Christian, he is a Jew, he is a Hindu, he is a Buddha, he is a Muslim, I say you are wrong. I have videos showing that some who claim to be Christian priests or ministers exposing them. Rabbi and Muslims So I'm not one-sided I Have to be truthful with myself first For if you cannot be truthful with yourself You are not exist You are just additional lie and The word is full of it They fool you in the news they fool you in your books they fool you in history. They fool you in documentary. And you believe in them. Just because somebody he made a documentary in National Geographic, you believe in it. But you do not know that every person who speak, he have his own agenda. And he speak for his agenda. And all those who speak in TVs, they have agenda and they are politically correct. So don't be just additional lie the world is swimming with those lies where they try to convince the women that she have to make a plastic surgery to have a big better breast they fool you they are just trying to get your money where they convert or they try to to, to, to convert you from a human to be their own product to buy what they want, to spend what they want, to be what they want. It is time for us to be who we want to be and to say what we want to say. And who care what people think? If a man want to marry you because you are skinny, he will leave you for someone she is skinny. If a person he love you because you have big breasts, he will leave you for someone she have bigger breast 
If someone marry you because you are young, tomorrow you will be old and he will leave you for someone younger. Don't fool yourself. And if you lie about religion, you ask yourself a very simple question. You are lying to who? You are lying to yourself. Many, they lie just to accomplish political accomplishment. As we see what happened with the Trump. If the same decision is made by Obama, nobody complain. The same decision made by Trump, the whole world go crazy. Every president before Trump, he said Jerusalem is the land of the Jews. Trump, he just signed a signature about what he said, what they said before him. They go crazy. This is because we are in a time where everybody is a hypocrite. And nobody dare to say the king is naked. And they are in the time when they try to convince you that we should not make the terrorist angry. As if the terrorists, they will leave you alone if you don't make them angry. So we have enough of hypocrisy. Please don't be an additional lie. We have enough. Thank you very much. And may the Lord bless you, all of you, and see you soon again. Tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. Sunday, New York time. God bless.